It's well overdue time for moderate Muslims to speak out, to speak out against the various things that we find, uh, various voices that we find in and outside the Muslim community attempting to define what Islam is and who the Muslims are. Islam, by its very nature, is a moderate religion. And Allah in the Quran describes the community of Muslims, the community of believers, as moderate or as wasat in the middle. He said, Ummatan wasata, that, you, that the community of Muslims, they're a balance, they're in the middle, they're in the middle of the various extremes. The extreme of polytheism and the extreme of other communities that had went astray. Islam, by its very nature, is just. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran describes the Muslims as just. Unfortunately, there are those voices within the uh, Muslim community and outside the Muslim community that attempt to distort these pristine Islamic principles. Also, there are secularist extremists, equally, who attempt to hijack the political discourse regarding what Islam is and what the Muslim's position is on this issue and the Muslim's uh, position on that issue is. Thus there is the need to articulate what Islam is and some aspects of the Islamic uh, viewpoint. The is Islam is legislated by Allah, the creator of the heavens and earth. And we educate by the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, meaning the traditions of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. When we look to many of these extremists, they use their particular ideology, their particular uh, orientation, their particular theory about how things should be or how things are or how Islam should be. And when I mention extremists, I mean those people who have gone beyond the, the, the uh, boundaries and limits that have been set by Islam. For example, when we have people who are extremists who are uh, committing wanton violence, for example, we have some of those uh, groups like Al-Qaeda and other groups that are extreme. They're extreme in their ideology. They're extreme in their practice. Their practice meaning they go beyond the bounds. Islam doesn't call them to that, but yet they take it upon themselves to try to uh, articulate the needs and concerns of the Muslim community through violence or through violent protest or through extremist rhetoric. The secularist element, they attempt to articulate uh, what true Islam is by equally distorting the principles of Islam. And they are equally as dangerous because they attempt to belittle Islam and the Islamic principles like the Sharia principles. And for example, today I was listening on uh, NPR and today they hosted a so-called uh, group of moderate voices from the Muslim community. And they made very wild claims such as the Salafist or the Salafis are responsible for violent protest. Uh, when in fact, they are, by making these claims, they are following suit with how the media falsely propagates and portrays Orthodox Islam. The reason I say this, because the Salafist tradition means that they, by their very nature, are trying to hold on to the Orthodox Islam through prayer, fasting, the pilgrimage, and the Islamic principles that are espoused in totality through the Quran and the authentic sun sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. Salafis are the furthest people from protest and so -called, uh, the so-called Arab Spring that we saw, the rebellions, uh, the overthrowing of Saddam Hussein, the overthrowing of Gaddafi, the overthrowing even what's going on in Syria. Salafists do not take a part in that. They do not like to see the bloodshed and the turmoil, but they know by participating in those kind of activities, it only increases uh, chaos for the Muslim and the non-Muslim world. That these kind of uh, 
attempts and revolutions only cause further chaos. Salafist, uh, this can be attested all throughout Salafist literature, and this is not the time and the place to go into depth about this. But you will find that this goes all the way back to the oral traditions of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he discouraged going and rebelling against the Muslim leader. You'll find this in some of the most authentic sources in the uh, Islamic religion, such as Sahih Muslim, where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Asami wa ta'a ala maryam muslim fima yuhibbu wa kariya. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, listening and obeying the leader in what you like and what you dislike is even if he strikes your back so islam although this may be difficult for us who come from the western tradition who believe that if you're being oppressed you should always immediately fight back islam teaches us restraint and patience and that our affairs is with allah the creator of the heavens and earth and that we should not especially go against removing a muslim authority these are a part of the salafist and orthodox tradition so as I was mentioning, today the guest on All Things Considered, or also it might have been Fresh Air, I can't re recall which uh, program it was on uh, NPR, they stated Islam has an atheist tradition. And they, they said Islam has an atheist tradition since Muhammad وسلم, since his time. These were people who were claiming to be Muslim. They, they said this. Why do I bring this up? It's because it's about time that we took the discourse back from those people who falsely portray Islam, falsely articulate the needs and concerns of the Muslim community, falsely uh, portray themselves as leaders of the Muslim community. This is completely false. How in the world can you possibly conceive of an atheist tradition in a uh, religion which claims that, is, that uh, the Qur'an is the divine speech of Allah and that it should be practiced in every aspect of life, whether it be the Sharia principles, the Sharia punishments, the Sharia, uh, th the, every form of legislation. There is no such thing, no matter what peoples tell you, of separation of church and state in Islam. That is just Islam. That's what we believe as Muslims. You don't have to believe that, but we believe that because that is what tears away from a community whenever you say you believe in something, but yet you don't practice it. As Allah says in the Quran, Allah says in the Quran, do you enjoin uh, goodness and righteousness upon the people, but yet you don't practice it yourself when you are reading the book? So this was a lesson actually even for the Jews and the Christian community. And it is a lesson for us as Muslims that we believe in the principles of Islam. And Islam by its very nature is moderate. Let's define what moderate is because moderate is not as those so-called moderate Muslims claim or as the other uh, outside uh, people who are outside of Islam claim to define for us what moderation. Moderation means that you are taking what Allah has prescribed and you're following it to the best of your ability. That is moderation. Moderation is not going to the extremists of those people who are uh, encouraging violence and, and, and killing people and, and destroying communities, nor is moderation, those people who belittle the Sharia, say they don't want to practice the Sharia, the, the Islamic law, who say they don't believe, they, they believe prayer is a choice and they don't have to pray and they can consider themselves Muslims, or that they believe uh, that, you know, the prohibition for alcohol is outdated, so now we should be allowed to drink alcohol, or because now in the Western societies and some non-Western societies even, that homosexuality has got to such a uh, uh, epic proportions that now a man should be able to marry a man even if he's a Muslim well no that is not moderation that is secularism that is taking away from the religious principles and judging according to your own whims and whatever happens to be the current uh, currently politically correct and the current political discourse and the current political culture but however Islam has principles that are espoused by the Quran and the Sunnah and the Sunnah meaning the way of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Why I want to deal with this claim really quickly that Islam has an atheist tradition since Muhammad's time. This is what this individual said. 
atheism, the dis atheism, meaning to believe that there is no God, is the exact opposite of Islam. So how is it that we can say that atheism as a tradition existed not only in Muhammad's time, he said that it was a part of the Islamic tradition. Well, that those two terms uh, contradict each other in totality. Why do I say that? Because Islam, to enter Islam, to become a Muslim, a person says, "Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah." They say, "I bear witness that there is no god worthy of worship except Allah, and that Muhammad is his last prophet and messenger." Meaning that Muhammad came after Jesus. Alayhim after salatu wasalam. May peace and blessings be upon them, as well as all the prophets and messengers of God. All the way from Adam, the father of all of us, uh, up to Muhammad. May peace and blessings be upon them all. Islam is bearing witness that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah. Meaning that there, it is purely based on pure monotheism. We don't pray to Muhammad. We don't pray to the graves. We don't pray to the dead. We don't pray to the saints. We don't pray to Jesus. We don't pray to Muhammad. We don't pray to Moses or Adam. We don't pray to the angels. We pray to the one who created them all. And so, with that being said, these people who claim to be moderate, they're hijacking the discourse. And so it's imperative for us to speak out that true moderation in Islam is practicing the principles of Islam. Prayer, fasting, charity, uh, making the sacred pilgrimage, and all the other duties and the beliefs, the Islamic belief system in totality, not cutting and pasting, cutting and pasting based upon our desires, because this is what caused the communities before us to split and to divide and to belittle their own faith to where you have people who are priests and ministers in this day and age, and the, the church and the even the Catholic church is now debating whether homosexuality is, is bad or not. Well, no, there's no debate in Islam about this, nor should there ever be a debate about this. It's clear from the Quran. We take from the Quran. We don't take from what is currently politically correct in this day and age, and in the next age it's it's not correct, and in this society it's not correct. We stay with those principles, and we use those principles uh, in order to interact and have social interact and to define our political culture. Those principles espoused by the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with the understanding of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are how we practice and understand and form our world view. Why is uh, this claim absolutely uh, ridiculous that the individual said about the atheist, atheist tradition in Islam or secular tradition in Islam? And why I feel it's a shame on the media for playing into the hands of secularists like this, because those are the only kind of individuals you'll see on NPR or you'll see in the media, is those people who supposedly are moderate voices, but in fact they are the most extreme because they are the ones who want to tear apart Islam until it is just nothing but a name and a, and a simple practice you have in your home without the principles and traditions that are Islamic, that are were from the very outset, and were legislated by Allah, the creator of the heavens and earth. Islam, as I said, is based on monotheism, and some of the verses which illustrate that for us, and show us that there is no such thing as an atheist or secular tradition. Allah says about the purpose of life. He says, This is a Quranic verse where Allah says, I, did, I created mankind and the jinn, meaning the spirit world, for the purpose of worshiping me. Allah also said, And I sent to every and we sent to every nation a messenger to worship Allah. Allah alone and stay away from those things which are worshipped besides him. This is what we believe that the Christians and the Jews were also ordered with, but yet they strayed away from those principles by especially the Christians beginning to worship Jesus and say and believe in the Trinity and so forth. But we believe more in what is uh, you'll find in the first commandment in the Bible that it is, it is monotheism, that thou should not associate a partner with God. God is the only one worthy of worship. He created Jesus. He created Muhammad. He created the angels. He created you and I. He created us in nations and tribes so that we would get to want, know one another. He gave us various language, various colors, various uh, status and stages in life. 
and that was in order to that was from his divine wisdom and it's so that we worship him and him alone and I hope I haven't strayed too far from the message but I just wanted to uh, make that point that moderation is in accordance with the Quran and the Sunnah in accordance with the straight path as the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in an authentic hadith he mentioned as one of his companions mentioned that he drew a line in the sand and he drew two, uh, one on the right and one on the left. And they asked him about that. He said, the line in the middle, this is the path of Allah. This is the Sabil Allah. And he said, those on the other, هذه subul, That those are various paths. And on every one of those paths, except for the middle path, which is the middle court, which leads you to paradise, which leads you to meet your Lord in the hereafter, on the day of judgment. This, those other course, on the end of them are devils that will call you away from the worship of God. That is a, a very brief, a very uh, brief meaning, or hopefully concise and accurate meaning of what this uh, tradition of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said. And we hope that we strive to maintain on the middle course and we reflect Islam in the most proper and uh, best of manners and may Allah forgive us of all of our sins and bless us all with guidance wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam